Uh, next, we'll be hearing from Alzra Ali Mohammed, who's joining us from uh, Zagazi University in Egypt. Uh, she'll be talking about uh, nanotail and antibiotic resistance, the characterization of R piosin activity against gram positive pathogens. Hello, everyone. I'll start sharing the screen now. Is my screen visible now? It is, but we see a blank screen with white. Okay. Oh, perfect. It's visible. We can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm pleased to be with you today in this uh, conference. Today, I will talk about this uh, uh, topic. Uh, first of all, I'd like to introduce myself. I'm Zahra Ali Muhammad uh, from Egypt. Uh, I'm a PhD student and scientific content creator on YouTube. Here is my email for further contact. Uh, my presentation today will be about this, um, this uh, research article uh, titled Characterization of r and Activity Against Gram-Positive Pathogens for the First Time with a special focus on Staphylococcus aureus. This, uh, this article has been published uh, in the Journal of Applied Microbiology uh, on May uh, 2021. I'd like to thank my supervisors and co-authors, Professor Dr. Ahmad Askura, Professor Dr. Muhammad Ashraf Muhammad Shawadfi, and Professor Dr. Jihan Ahmed. Before I start talking about this work, I'd like to talk first of all about the motivation for this work. Uh, what we see here is a, a summary of uh, the World Health Organization's report about antimicrobial resistance on uh, 2014. Uh, according to uh, the World Health Organization's reports about antimicrobial resistance, antimicrobial resistance currently kill at least seven, uh, 700 thousands of people around the world. And um, it's obvious. Uh, MRSA infections, about 64% of uh, MRSA infections uh, end up finally with death of the patient. Um, Staphylococcus aureus is known uh, as uh, one of the first antibiotic resistance developing bacteria since the discovery of penicillin, medicillin, and lastly vancomycin. Uh, the antimicrobial resistance is expected to uh, kill about 10 million people around the world uh, in 2050. Taking this into account, we have to uh, find uh, a solution uh, for such a uh, health burden. The solution for antimicrobial resistance problem uh, could be um, it could take two directions, uh, developing uh, new antimicrobials and um, surveillance on antimicrobial use. Uh, currently, World Health Organization uh, set different approaches for uh, monitoring the use of antimicrobials. Uh, the subject of today's study is relating to the first solution, developing new antimicrobials. First of all, I'd like to talk about one of the um, uh, target antimicrobials, bacteriocenes. Bacteriocenes are um, a category of uh, antimicrobials. It's uh, peptides produced by bacteria to kill a related, specific, uh, related species uh, to the producer strain. Currently, there's some uh, bacteriocenes have been already used industrially in food preservation, like Nisim. Like Nisim. Uh, r -biocenes or r -telocenes, the subject of today's study, have uh, specific characters. Uh, they are similar to the, the tail of myovirate bacteriophage, as we see here in this picture. They have uh, a large molecular weight when compared to regular biocenes or regular bacteriocenes. They also um, uh, protease uh, resistant. They cannot be um, digested by protease enzymes. Also, they uh, possess a uh, broad antibacterial spectrum and uh, they doesn't contain any nuclear material and uh, they could be engineered uh, through modification of the genes, including the tail fibers. First of all, I'd like to talk about five genes. Five genes, uh, Bacteriocenes are produced by Stomonas erginosa. Um, there are two, two main categories of biocenes, telocenes and small soluble biocenes. Uh, telocenes could be R biocenes, uh, the subject of today's study, uh, and F biocenes, which is similar to the cyphovirated tail uh, bact uh, bacteriophage. Moving to uh, the results of this study, uh, we found that, um, uh, we found that um, 59% uh, of uh, the isolates, of the Pseudomonas erigenosa isolates, produced uh, diffused edge of inhibition zone, uh, like in plate number B. 
this result uh, indicating production of S biocin or soluble biocin. Uh, we found that 18% of uh, pseudomonas ergonomic strains produced a sharp edge of inhibition zone, meaning production of uh, tyrosine or f biocene like in plate number C. Uh, we also found that 23% of uh, pseudomonas ergonomic isolates produced a mixed uh, inhibition zone, um, inhibition edge uh, of the inhibition zone. Uh, <coughs> referring to production of uh, more than one type of biocenes, uh, soluble biocene and etherocene type. Like in plate number D, uh, we can see this uh, a diffused, uh, diffused part of inhibition edge and a sharp edge, uh, sharp part of the inhibition edge. When we examined the uh, R biocene uh, using transmission electron microscopy, we found that there is contra some contracted particles and uh, relaxed parts, particles. Uh, on picture number B, uh, there is um, dimensions of the uh, of a contracted uh, R biocene particle. Uh, when we uh, applied the SDS page analysis for the uh, purified R biocene, we found uh, we found uh, a 38 kilodalton protein band representing the sheath protein subunit. Uh, when we uh, we also found a 23 kilodalton uh, band representing the tube uh, protein. When we come through uh, this work, we explain uh, how this uh, results uh, and get new findings. When we calculated the birth size uh, for biocene production, we found that each cell of Pseudomonas erygnosa uh, strain uh, can produce about 428 uh, non-induced R biocene particles. And uh, we found that each cell of Pseudomonas uh, of Spherococcus aureus uh, could be killed uh, by 16 R biocene particles. Uh, in this uh, in this picture, uh, we see uh, the transmission electron microscopic examination of uh, S aureus uh, treated uh, with R biocene. In the uh, leg, in the picture uh, on uh, on the right, we see uh, contracted R biocene particles close to uh, and uh, attached to the S aureus membrane. Uh, in the other uh, in the other picture, we see uh, pores formed in the S aureus membrane. Uh, in, as a result of R biocene treatment. So we we shall uh, talk about the mechanism of action of R biocene. The mechanism of action of R biocene began with um, attachment of the tail fiber to the cell receptor. Then the outer sheath uh, is contracted, leading to exposure of uh, the inner tube, uh, which um, which uh, cause uh, poor formation in the cell membrane. Uh, resulting in a uh, leakage of the macromolecules to outside the cell uh, and complete death of the cell. Previously, it was known that R biocene depend on presence of lipopolysaccharide on the cell membrane of the sensitive strains. But in this study, the new finding in this study is uh, lipoticoic acid in uh, a gram positive bacteria uh, could serve as a receptor for uh, R biocenes. Here we see the results of uh, lipoticoic acid absorption assay. Uh, first, uh, this, uh, this, uh, this, this experiment uh, was applied to test whether uh, the lipoticoic acid extracted from gram positive bacteria, uh, Staphylococcus aureus, and uh, Listeria monocytogenes, uh, if it's able to neutralize the activity of R biocene. So, in plate number A, when we incubated the R biocene with uh, lipoticoic acid extracted from uh, the indicator S aureus, uh, then we treated the same strain with this mix. Uh, we found there is no inhibition and there is no activity of R biocene, indicating that the lipoticoic acid of this uh, Spirococcus aureus strain has neutralized the activity of R biocene and prevented it to uh, have an activity or uh, inhibition against uh, this uh, S aureus strain. In plate number B, uh, we only tested the R biocene without lipoticoic acid, and uh, it was able to boost this, uh, its inhibition activity, inhibitory activity. Uh, we did the same experiment uh, against uh, Listeria monocytogenes. We extracted lipoticoic acid from Listeria monocytogenes, uh, and we tested it like we did uh, with Spherococcus aureus.
Uh, here we tested our biocene against uh, different strains of Staphylococcus aureus, and uh, it possessed uh, significant inhibition. Uh, uh, this is one of the new discoveries uh, for the first time to uh, find such activity of our biocene. Uh, our biocene was able to form bacteriophage like plaques uh, against S. aureus. Uh, in the picture number A, we see uh, the Staphylococcus aureus uh, was grown without uh, R-biocene, uh, so there is no inhibition. In plate number B, uh, in picture number B, we see formation of bacteriophage-like plaques. Uh, this bacteriophage-like plaques uh, resulted when we uh, spread the uh, S aureus treated with R-biocene, when we spread it uh, by H shape, uh, shape movement. Uh, but when we spread um, the treated S aureus using SWAP or uh, ROD plus, uh, it grows as um, uh, single columns, as we see in uh, picture number C. Uh, we also, in this study, we uh, tested the effect of uh, temperature on the production of r uh, The potent strain or the producer strain of r uh, was able to uh, produce r at temperature uh, ranging from 10 uh, Celsius to uh, 65. But the best temperature for production of this r was at uh, 30 uh, degrees. We also tested the pH stability of r and uh, pH 6.8 and pH 6, uh, 7.5 was the best uh, pH for uh, storage of r -biocene. We also tested the ther thermal stability of r um, The best uh, temperature for storage of r was uh, at 4 degrees. Uh, it was stable for um, about uh, 40 days. We tested also the chemical and enzymatic stability of r biocene r was, uh, was resistant to alpha chemotrypsin uh, when uh, incubated with it for one hour. Um, also, it was resistant to the treatment with uh, 3 and 5 molar of uh, urea, uh, but uh, the r uh, lost its activity uh, when treated with 7 molar of urea. We tested the host range of r and we found it can possess uh, antibacterial activity against Staphylococcus aureus in plate number A, uh, against Listeria monocytogenes in plate number B, against um, Candida albicans in plate number C and F, and uh, we found it can possess antibacterial activity against Bacillus cereus, uh, the foodborne pathogen in plate number D, and uh, against Acinetobacter bumani, a clinical isolate, in plate number E. We tested the anti-biofilm activity of r and uh, we found it can possess anti-biofilm activity or reduction of the biofilms formed by uh, Staphylococcus aureus, Candida albicans, Bacillus cereus, Escherichia coli, Listeria monocytogenes, and uh, Acinetobacter bumani. Um, the biofilms that were, uh, that were uh, the most sensitive to r treatment was the biofilms of Candida and Bacillus cereus and Listeria monocytogenes. While the biofilm is formed by uh, Escherichia coli and, uh, and Acinetobacter bumani, um, show a very, um, very or, uh, low effect uh, or um, no effect. The conclusion and recommendation from this study. From this study, we found that our biocenes can possess antimicrobial and antibiofilm activity not only against the species related, related to the producer, we produced that uh, in this study from uh, Sedonis erignosa, but it was able to possess antibacterial and antibiofilm activity against uh, other strains, as we have seen, against Candida albicans, Bacillus cereus, Listeria monocytogenes, Staphylococcus aureus, and other bacteria. Uh, also, it was known before that uh, lipopolysaccharide, according to the previous studies uh, applied on this uh, on arbiocene. Uh, they stated that uh, arbiocene depend on presence of lipopolysaccharide to possess uh, or to uh, be able to be able to uh, have antibacterial activity on uh, the host uh, strains. But in this case, we uh, we did our study on gram positive uh, in gram positive uh, pathogens or gram positive bacteria. In this case, gram positive bacteria doesn't have lipopolysaccharide; they have lipotypicals. So. Um, in the uh, LTA adsorption assay, we found that LTA lipotypic acid can neutralize the, um, the activity of r 
So when we compare the structure of uh, lipopolysaccharide acid and uh, lipopolysaccharide, we found that both have a glucose uh, glucose residue. So the glucose residue and lipo uh, of lipopolysaccharide acid in the membrane of gram boosted uh, bacteria can serve as a receptor for binding of the RPC and tail fibers. Uh, uh, currently, we see that most bacteria genes are tested against related species. However, they might have activities against non-related species. Therefore, we recommend testing uh, bacteria genes um, against uh, various species non-related to the producer. Uh, also, uh, if we uh, read about um, antimicrobial peptides, we, are, we can see many bacteria genes have been identified in vitro uh, and in vitro characterized for their antimicrobial activity. But very few of them have been uh, subjected to preclinical and clinical evaluation. Taking the uh, global threat of uh, antimicrobial resistance, uh, we should uh, uh, orient our, uh, our future uh, work to assess the documented antimicrobials as general, not only bacteriocenes, for future uh, clinical use and application. Um, thank you all, and I will be happy uh, to receive any questions if you have. Thank you so much. That was fantastic. Um, I do have a question. So okay. um, I have read before that uh, they tested our pyocene for treatment of chronic bacterial infections, like in the case of cystic fibrosis or some, or some disease like that. Yes. Um, and they noted that our pyocene was effective. However, usually in chronic infections, the bacterial uh, colony is heterogeneous. And the response to our pyrocene is also heterogeneous. It's, it differs from, from uh, f type of bacteria to type of bacteria. Yeah. Do you think that, uh, with your expertise with our pyrocene, do you think that perhaps in the future we'll be able to tailor the tail uh, receptor sort of binding to make it more widespread in terms of, of targeting these, these heterogeneous populations? Yeah, uh, there already have been, uh, I have already, uh, there is um, a study published in uh, T20 uh, in 2008 uh, about modification of the uh, tail fibers to be able to uh, target broad spectrum of uh, bacteria. And this is what makes our as uh, one of the efficient antimicrobials for future uh, clinical use. Perfect, thank you. Uh, we also, uh, there is a question regarding uh, the contracted uh, versus relaxed particles. So is there a way to adjust the ratio to enhance the killing of S. aureus and like, for example, push towards contraction attachment? Uh, to improve the attachment of the tail fiber to S. aureus? Yeah, and enhance the killing of S. aureus. Um, by, actually, by sort of adjusting the contracted versus relaxed particles. Um, we have we didn't apply uh, such uh, such experiment to improve the activity of RPC, but from our uh, our work we uh, we found that uh, the pH uh, the pH of the uh, purify, uh, purification buffer and uh, the temperature of storage uh, are the main effective uh, effectors on uh, the activity of RPC. So uh, we applied the uh, pH and thermal stability for, uh, to uh, to uh, detect the best uh, the best conditions for uh, applying the uh, activity or improving the activity of RPC. Fantastic! Thank you so much. Thank you.